Hello, my fellow gotcha addicts. This is going to be a video talking about Shalonen and whether I think it was worth it to pull for her C2 or not, because I did, of course, get her C2 as well as her signature weapon. And overall, they're fairly good, but there's also some things that you should take note of when you get it. And this will also be some sort of, you know, a basic discussion of Shalonen in general. So what does Shalonen's C2 do? First, we should also talk about her C1, I guess, for anyone that's interested, since you have to get it to get to her C2. It makes it so that her Night Soul points decrease at 30% less speed, and her time in her Night Soul state can be extended, or is extended, by up to 45%. This is decent, I guess. It's nice for exploring so that you can run around in her skates more. So that's okay, and it also makes it easier to stay on field if you try to use her as a main DPS. Because then you don't run out of time nearly as fast, so that's nice. And the second part of it is when her source samples are active, she also gets nearby or gives nearby active character, characters, including herself or teammates, interruption resistance. This is not perfect interruption resistance. It's like a medium amount, so you won't get staggered as often, but really big hits are still going to screw you over. Overall, it's okay. I wouldn't recommend pulling this, though, if you don't plan to go for C2. Just C0 is totally fine if you don't want her c2 going for just c1 is not really recommended but her c2 is where things get really spicy shalonin's geo source samples will always remain active now this is a little bit confusing and we'll get to that after i explain the second part additionally when her source samples activate all nearby party members will gain effects corresponding to the active source sample that matches their elements type so if you have electro source samples, it gives 25 energy and decreases their elemental burst cooldown by six seconds. This, how it works because it's different than a buff like the other ones that it gives, is it activates when the source samples are created. So after you, you know, make them with your elemental skill. So after you do what is usually two basic attacks if you don't have, you know, more than two Geo characters. So whenever you do that, it'll give energy and reduce the burst cooldowns of all of your electro teammates. And because of the short cooldown on Shalonin's skill, you can actually kind of spam it. So it's pretty good for getting energy and stuff. And you can do some funny stuff with it. For Cryo characters, they get 60% crit damage. And the, all of the buffs here apply to the character regardless of the type of damage you're doing. So if I have the Cryo source sample active and my Cryo character is dealing damage but it's not dealing cryo damage it will still increase the damage dealt for example with like uh rosaria right since she's cryo and you build her for physical damage sometimes it's still going to give the crit damage buff to rosaria so against this chicken guy robot chicken guy right here if we go here you can see we have 105.1 percent crit damage and then if we go ahead and activate our source samples right here and go back to Rosaria, 165.1% crit damage. So someone like her can still benefit even if she's not dealing cryo damage. She'll still that get that bonus crit damage. Granted, you won't get the elemental res shred that her source samples give, so it's still not like optimal for Rosaria, but it's there if you care about that. For Hydro characters, they get 45% max HP. This is pretty nice because, you know, it's just more damage on a lot of characters that skills HP or more healing, that sort of thing. Pyro characters get 45% attack. This is very, very mediocre. Honestly, the worst part of her C2 because Pyro characters already have a lot of attack. Like the, what is it, the resonance when you have two Pyro characters? That already is giving you extra attack. And a lot of people like to use Bennett, who is giving you like a thousand attack. That's a huge attack buff. Or there's also Hu Tao, who gets a massive amount of attack from casting her skill because it converts HP into attack. She's not HP skilling, but she is. It's just weird like that. So not really worth it. I definitely wouldn't pull for C2 if you just plan to use her with Pyro characters exclusively, but I don't know why would you would only use her with Pyro characters. And then the last part of it is Geo source samples will give the Geo character a 50% damage dealt. 
and this will not be reflected in your stats because this is plus 50% damage dealt, not plus 50% geo damage dealt, it's plus 50% damage dealt as a bonus to geo characters. So it can be a little bit confusing. So if we take Shalonin out of the party and we go up to this enemy right here, we can view our stats on Shiori right now, right? 84, 152, we've got, you know, not important stuff and our geo damage right now is at 15 percent or sorry zero percent sorry 15 percent geo res we have no geo damage bonus and we also have no physical damage bonus no damage bonus at all on the character so if we whack this enemy 75 damage it deals when he's got his dr but once he's up that's 448. now if we add shalonin into the party her source samples from the Geo one always being active. The res shred won't do anything because it shreds elemental damage of Geo, not physical damage. So even though we have Shalom in the party now, though, you can see our damage bonus has not gone up at all. None of these numbers have gone up, even though we have Shalom in the party. But it's still going to, first off, you can see we get the arrows down, showing that the res shred for elements is applying to the enemy. And now look at that, 673 even though it's not reflecting the damage bonus in the stats, that 50% damage bonus is applied to all the damage on the Geo character. And that also covers how her Geo source samples remain active, is it will just always be active, regardless of whether you activate the source samples or not. It is 100% of the time, so long as Shilonin is in the party, you will always be shredding nearby resistance to Geo and giving a damage bonus to Geo characters, which is really, really nice. I was very confused by it first because it wasn't reflecting in the stats as giving a damage bonus. So I was like, is it broken? Is it bugged out? No, it just, it doesn't reflect it there, but I can assure you that it is working. Now, is this worth it? Is it worth it for a constellation? In the case of Hyro characters, I already said, I don't really think it's worth it. It's meh there. For Hydro characters, it's decent because, you know, you can get more damage or healing. That's all right. So the crit damage on crowd characters is actually pretty huge, especially because they already have a lot of crit rates. So this is going to be a decent damage buff. The Electro is interesting. You don't usually have energy issues on Electro characters. Not most of them, at least. There are some characters that have issues with Electro but our energy but most of them are fine right like especially because that Raiden exists and people like to use her a lot with other characters and she batteries them up and she batteries herself so you don't have an issue but there would be other characters like maybe Sara could use the extra energy or Beto is the main one that comes to mind but again most electro characters in my experience don't really have energy issues a lot of the time other than Beto or Sino now the burst cooldown can be pretty funny it's not always extremely practical if you're doing tight rotations then maybe it can help like very short rotations and you want to wrap back around as fast as possible it can help with chlorand teams so you can burst more often if you are also using the four piece thundering fury so you get your skill back because chlorand has low on field time so you can just really tighten up your rotations to get them out in like really short really high burst damage rotations as fast as possible it's not really needed on Raiden, but it can help if you want to use your big sword on Raiden as much as possible. It's decently nice on a character like Yaimiko since she has a 22 second burst cooldown and a 90 energy cost on her burst. So it's actually really helpful for her, but overall it's just kind of there. It's interesting, but not like a game changer in most scenarios. The main reason I would pull her C2 is for the damage dealt for geo characters right on top of the geo source samples always remaining active now part of shalonin's kit is that for her to apply or create the source samples you have to have at least two patch characters in the team right pyro hydro cryo or electro and if you don't you cannot create the source samples so let's say i have two geo units and one dendro one animo i don't know why you do that that's weird or let's say two animo instead right you're not going to create the source samples. Or let's say you have three Geo characters and one of any other element. You're not going to create the source samples. So if you're trying to do that to get 
res shred to geo for a geo dealing damage teammates then you're completely screwed over by not being able to run triple geo and that's a problem because a lot of the geo characters wants to have more than two geo teammates especially for like particles and stuff there's obviously shalone is going to be one of the geo characters you'll be using in Navia's case, you don't really have an issue because she really wants two patch characters anyways for her A1 passive, sorry, A4 passive. But on other characters, like let's say Noel, Noel really wants more than one other Geo teammate. Because you could go with Goro, right? Goro's really good, he's going to give a bunch of death. But then you could also go with Chiori. Chiori is also a really good character. You could, like, like you might want to go four Geo characters. Chiori, Shalonin, Goro, and ne uh, Noel. But you can't do that and get the buff still with Shalonin, which is a problem. But you completely have that fixed with her C2. That problem is gone entirely. And on top of that, you no longer have to worry about uptime. Because while it does have a 15 second uptime, sometimes the source samples will run out before you're finished with your rotation. And you, you know, obviously lose that damage because it's gone at the tail end of your rotation when you're still dealing damage. But because the Geo source sample will always be active, you don't have to worry about uptime because, well, it's permanently up. And then obviously the 50% extra damage to Geo is pretty huge as well because Geo characters can't make use of reactions to like actually help with their damage because crystallize is a thing sadly but the extra geo damage is obviously nice to get more damage to your geo teams and it's really good for that but there's an issue with that okay there's a pretty big issue and my problem with it is that she doesn't heal anymore okay when you have triple geo teammates or sorry less than two patch teammates it doesn't just make it so she doesn't create her source samples anymore it also converts her into a more dps oriented setup it makes it so that her elemental burst has three ticks of damage instead of one but it no longer heals and that's a really big problem because farina exists and well, Farina's really broken, and a lot of the time, if you want maximum damage, you would think you would want to go with Shalonin and Farina together, especially on a team with like Noel. But you don't have the healing for that anymore. So you can run triple Geo characters and still get the source samples, but then you're screwed because you don't have heals still, which means you have to run a healer. And I found that to be a really big problem for if I'm trying to get Farina and Shalona in the same team. So here is an example with a Noel team. We have Noel, and she's the healer. Okay, so this fixes it. All right, because we still have a healer here. But let's say I wanted to run Navia, right? Even though you kind of want two patch characters, let's say I wanted to run Navia here. And then I want Shalona for a damage buff. I want Farina because she gives huge damage buffs. And then I want Chiori because Chiori is insane, despite what some people might say. Well, now I have a problem. I can't heal. I can't heal to build up Farina's burst. And that's not exactly <laughs> optimal. Or let's say I wanted to have like Eugene. You could even go like Eugene here instead you're still pretty much screwed or if you wanted chiori is the main dps as well because that's an option for some people i like to run main dps chiori it's kind of a meme but it's funny or if you have c6 on her well now again you're gonna have to run a healer which means you're giving up the potential for goro's pretty decent buffs to like death and geo damage and crit damage and interruption resistance you lose out on that as an option because you have to go a proper healer yeah i know technically goro can heal with this c4 that's not really enough healing for farinas so then you end up having to waste a slot just to build fanfare and you can't like you know have the benefit of an animo healer that can then shred resistance even more because well you can't swirl geo so that's a really big problem and I, I don't know, it's, I guess it's really not that big of a problem. I'm, I'm probably over, like, making it seem like it's a bigger issue than it is. But in my personal experience, it's kind of annoying. 
and I really wish Shalonen held on to the healing aspect of her kit. Even if you had multiple Geo characters, or at least like at C2, it would fix that. That doesn't mean it's bad at all, and you can still just run Farina on another team, right? Like, let's say you don't run Farina at all. Farina's opened up to go on a different team, and then your Geo team doesn't have to have her anymore. Then, well, you're fixed. Uh, ignore Kaching. I don't know why I put Kaching here. So it's always nice to have a really crazy buffer on both sides because Farina and Shalonen are both, well, crazy buffers. But, you know, I digress. It's a thing and it's something that you should keep in mind because I didn't know this before I got Shalonen C2. So I think it's worth mentioning or good to have this information for when she comes back because her banner is gone now. So if you missed her, that's a, that's a yowzas. Now, after that, on, on to her signature weapon. Okay, we're going past her C2 now. We're done with that. Because I also want to talk about her signature weapon and whether this is worth it or not. It's decent, but honestly, I don't think it's necessary. It gives a humongous badungus amount of defense. And the refinement, sorry, the passive to it, you get... It's kind of complicated, but it's also pretty straightforward. Gain Ode to Flowers after normal or plunging attacks hit an opponent. Death increases by 8% and elemental damage increases by 10% for 6 seconds. With a max of 2 stacks and you can only trigger 1 stack per 10th of a second. When the effect reaches 2 stacks, its duration is refreshed and all nearby party members are given 8% elemental damage bonus for every 1000 defense Shalonen has, up to a maximum of 25.6% damage bonus and this buff lasts for 15 seconds. If you want to get the max amount of damage bonus from this, you are going to need 3,200 defense. But once you take into account that this gives extra death once you start hitting enemies, and Shalonen's A4 passive, which gives another 20% defense, you actually only need just under 2,900 defense to be able to get the full damage bonus. And the extra damage in death is pretty big for her as a dps if you decide to use her like that so that's nice but it's not really a huge amount of damage to the team especially when you consider how much damage you're going to be giving to the team as is so let's say you're using her with her well signature quotes artifact set the scroll of the hero of the center city well this is going to give you 40 percent extra damage bonus to your teammates and yourself usually and then if you have any other sources of damage increase right like let's say there's c2 that's like 50 percent damage to geo or you add in a teammate let's say you're trying to buff chiori's you usually have a lot of damage buff from goblets okay artifact sets like two pieces and four pieces other sources of teammates like farina if you try to put her in the same team as a farina who's going to give you an extra 75 percent damage bonus if you have her crowned or like c2 that's up to 100 percent, or c3 that's 120 percent. so this 25.6 percent damage bonus will just round down to 25 percent. that's easier that's actually going to end up being a lot less than you would think in most scenarios it's likely going to be about a 10% damage increase. Not all scenarios, like it might be better in some than others, of course, but in most, on average, it's gonna end up being around 10%. And in some scenarios, if you're really overkilling on damage, it can be even less than that. So the damage bonus to the team, while it's nice, it's not necessary, especially once you consider that you're giving up the option of running the Favonius Lance instead, because Favonius is insane. It gives you a huge amount of ER, basically completely removes any problems you might have with energy on Shalonen herself. And it also batteries up teammates because it gives you those white particles, which gives a pretty fair amount of energy to the whole team. So it's like, do you want a little bit more damage for the team, but you also give up a lot of extra energy? I don't know. I mean, I still think it's better most of the time than Favonius, but it's not so much better that I think it's worth getting, to be honest. The only reason I really pulled this is because I was trying to get Chiori's signature weapon. So uh, if it weren't for that, I would have skipped this and just stuck with the Favonius Lance. So when she comes back around, unless you really want to like hard main her or make her a DPS or something or like maximum 
possible damage as optimized as you can get unless you're one of those scenarios i would just skip it entirely and stick with favonius lance because it's just it's comfortable and it's very easy to get most people are going to have a favonius lance even if it's r1 it's still going to be pretty good because the cooldown on an r1 isn't that bad that's mostly it i guess for her signature weapon and her c2 as the what i think about them just some interesting things to keep note of when thinking about getting it or be it whether you got it already or with her upcoming not upcoming but <laughs> it's sometime in the future rerun which will probably be like six months from now so whenever that ends up happening if you like the video then maybe leave a like or subscribe that would be absolutely massive huge bungus the dungus for me so yeah that's gonna do it goodbye